largest fleet ever assembled in the Pacific. Battleships, cruisers, carriers, and transports steams for Tarawa, vital Japanese base in the middle of the Pacific. Tarawa, in the British Gilbert Islands, is one of the most heavily fortified of Jap air bases. Its recapture is important to the United Nations offensive. The invasion force moves into waters controlled by the Japanese fleet since 1941. In solemn reverence, men of the attacking force bow their heads in prayer. Ask God for guidance and aid as they approach the hostile shore. Dawn, and the Navy's big guns open fire. The Marines attack. Shells and aerial bombs have pounded the island's 22 miles of fortifications incessantly. But the enemy is well entrenched, and landing boats are met with a terrific fire. establish a beachhead, naval guns continue to shell Japanese positions inshore. Using hand grenades and bayonets, the Marines push forward inch by inch, wiping out pillboxes and machine gun nests one by one. Reinforcements arrive. Tarawa and the Gilbert Islands are in the hands of United Nations forces. The entire garrison, more than 4,000 Imperial Japanese Marines, annihilated in 76 hours. The most difficult, the most dangerous of all military operations achieved. Victory at Tarawa stands as a dramatic symbol of the growing offensive power of the United Nations in the Pacific. Smashed barbed wire and concrete emplacements along the coral-studded shore attest to the fury of the American attack. coastal batteries, now twisted and shattered. For 23 months, the Japs had fortified Tarawa, converted it from a peaceful copra trading post to one of the strongest bases in the Pacific. The fall of Tarawa is a vital blow to Japan. on the island were many Koreans, workers forced to labor in slavery by their Japanese masters. The vital airfield, rendered useless by continuous bombing, is quickly repaired as American construction battalions now turn Tarawa into a base against Japan. <laughs> Firmly entrenched, the United States Marines stand guard over the bloodiest battleground of the war in the Pacific.
In the shadow of the pyramids near Cairo, Egypt, in the heart of the Muslim world, the leaders of China, Great Britain, and the United States meet face to face for the first time. President Roosevelt, Prime Minister Churchill, and Generalissimo Chiang Kai-shek, united in the war against the Empire of Japan. Madam Chiang Kai-shek is here as advisor and interpreter to her husband. commands of the United Nations powers mapping the blows that will strip Japan of the vast empire gained through 50 years of terror and aggression. Three great allies pledged to a common cause, the unconditional surrender of Japan. To Tehran, capital of Iran, the conference is moved. Here, 6,000 miles from Washington, 2,700 miles from London, and 1,500 miles from Moscow, the President and Prime Minister meet their great ally in the war against Nazi Germany, Marshal Joseph Stalin, Premier of Soviet Russia. The dramatic conference for which the world has watched and waited, Roosevelt, Stalin and Churchill, climaxing a series of meetings that began with the Atlantic Charter and carried on through Casablanca and Moscow. Diplomatic representatives of the three nations are present. Molotov, Eden, Harriman. Mr. Churchill's daughter, Sarah, an officer in the Women's Auxiliary Air Force, is introduced to Premier Stalin by President Roosevelt. A dramatic ceremony highlights the meeting, the presentation of the Sword of Stalingrad, gift of Britain's king to the people of that heroic city. Marshal Stalin accepts the tribute on behalf of the Russian people. Backed by the greatest concentration of military power in history, the Tehran Conference broadcasts its official communique to the world. We, the President of the United States of America, the Prime Minister of Great Britain, and the Premier of the Soviet Union, have met and expressed our determination that our nation shall work together in the war and in the peace that will follow. The common understanding which we have here reached guarantees that victory will be ours. We came here with hope and determination. We leave here friends in fact, in spirit, and in purpose.